unfortunately were on the wrong one. So we do have a number one qualifier of Gavin Harlan instead of Robert Stout as we sort things out here and get ready to go. Looks like our cameraman is out there and, uh, and ready to give us some up close and personal views of our competitors. So let's get things started here and we'll kick it off with Bill Hines there. He'll start off on the pole, <coughs> driver of the number 57 mastermind. Entry brought us all some excitement a year ago with the infamous helmet toss, if you will, after the skirmish with Bo Lamasses. He's in his ninth season here with the SST and has over 120 starts, including his win in 2018. Then we go over to the second position of Zoe Edenholm, the In Harmony Sound Lounge number 21 truck from Scottsdale, Arizona. She made her debut in 2020 at Road America and just finished outside of the top five at Long Beach. Next, we go to the number 77 truck, sponsored by Continental Tire and Baja Jerky. It's the 14-year-old Max Gordon. He's the son of Robbie. Max grabbed his first career stadium super truck win at Long Beach just a few weeks ago and backed it up with a third-place finish for a third overall finish, currently second in the points. Then we go to a newcomer, Corey Winter, the Continental Tire back machine out of Lake Havasu City. Corey making his SST debut, fresh off of his first win, his first career Pro 2 win, I should say, in the Champ Off-Road Series just one week ago at Cranon, an extremely tough venue and a very tough field to grab a win at. Just missed the championship, in fact, last year by one point. Very talented, but first time inside of one of these trucks. We go back to the youngest driver in the field. They call him El Nino. At the ripe old age of 13, Ben Mayer is in the field, qualified third nonetheless to the number 67 Holiday Rambler entry of Ben Mayer making his SST debut, dubbed El Nino as mentioned before by the SST gang. He's an 11-time national karting champion, just won here at Mid-Ohio in Spec Miata one week ago. Then we go back to our fast trucks, the two fastest qualifiers, a complete field inversion here. It is a 2021 Rookie of the Year for the Stadium Super Trucks, sponsored by Continental Tire, Lucas Oil, and Fatheads Eyewear. He's out of Palm Springs, California. Grabbed a win at Nashville last year and the overall win. He's your number two qualifier by a mere four hundredths of a second. This is Robert Stout. And the number 55, sponsored by VP Racing Fuels, has nine stadium super truck wins, including a win here at Mid-Ohio in 2019. This is his second pole here at Mid-Ohio as well, and looking to pad his 30 career podiums here today. Your number one qualifier, put your hands together for Gavin Harlan. That is the field here. Unfortunately, no Robbie. Robbie is in Asia working on his side-by-side -side, uh, venture. So uh, we wish him uh, good success over there and hopefully back in the field as soon as possible. As mentioned before, a uh, complete field inversion based on how they qualified one day ago, John. And then also they have two motos where you earn points. They earn points for qualifying yesterday. They'll earn points here today based on a 12-point um, stack. And then tomorrow, we will finish things up for the second moto. Whoever has the most points is your overall winner. So we'll crown a winner here today, a winner tomorrow, and then an overall winner. Sounds great. As we got the field warmed up, just waiting for the countdown from race control. Again, no jump here on the front straightaway, but the jump's still in place, uh, just coming out of the keyhole. And then another one uh, up in the S's. So yeah, and it was really based around safety. Sure. Um, we were here yesterday. We watched, I mean, it's just there's, there's a couple of new players inside of the field. We don't need anything crazy to happen here, happen here with pit walls being so close. Obviously, the flag stand as well. So in the interest of safety, we'll give them a couple of jumps. We should also talk about the format of the race. As you well know, there will be a couple of mandatory cautions or uh, fun laps, as some people refer to them, because we'll run three at speed. Then we'll have a caution back around turn five where the jump is in the back, and they'll give these trucks a chance to cool off from turn five back up here to start finish. And then we'll run three more laps. We'll do the same exact thing again, and then we'll run the final three laps. Total of 11 laps, and they will put these trucks through their paces. And those fun laps, exactly what Ken was talking about. You'll see these drivers on the fun laps getting up on two wheels or sometimes two wheels anyway, or three, <laughs> as uh, they'll show off just a little bit while those trucks are cooling down. They've gotten the word to fire up the motors, so we are moments away here. Yeah, it'll also bunch that field back up, so we'll have a couple of restarts with everybody jammed back together. It always makes for some more excitement. So look forward to getting.
two started, I'm sorry, round three started here for the season. 20 inches of travel in the front, 26 in the rear. They make about 650 horsepower, weigh in at 2,800 pounds, 35-inch tires, an LS7 providing that power with a turbo 400. They also have a turning brake, if you will. They're able to operate the rear brakes independently from all four, and the trucks do have a spool in the back, meaning essentially they're paused at traction. When they put the gas down, both rear tires are spinning at the same rate of speed, which makes them very difficult to turn tight. You have to manipulate these trucks around. You'll see them articulate that left front tire way up in the air on the left on the left-hander. So here we go, green flag out. We are racing here in Mid-Ohio, round three for Robbie Gordon's Speed Energy Stadium Super Truck Series. Through turn number one as they work their way up toward the keyhole turn. As we follow the leaders, you can see that front wheel way off the ground on Gavin Harline's truck as they work their way down toward the keyhole turn. Yeah, Bill Hines out front there, and Bill Hines, a seasoned veteran, his ninth year here with the series. Zoe, who has uh, been running out there in Long Beach with us for a couple of years, and we talked about her making her debut a couple of years ago at Road America right there behind him. And then, of course, Max Gordon. Uh, Max, unfortunately, had a mechanical one day ago, so was not able to complete all the laps during practice slash qualifying. He'll have to get up on his game here today. Yeah, I know Zoe Edenholm from her open wheel days as she raced with us in the F4 US Series for a couple seasons. So uh, she's certainly a well-rounded young lady and a good driver to boot. And the 13-year-old Ben Meyer, I'm sorry, Ben Mayer out there is already blocking Stout. He pulled, he came right over there, filled the gap right in front of the 28 truck. So he is on it already. Young, talented 13-year-old. El Nino, as they call him. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, he's a hurricane man for sure. We all went to dinner last night courtesy of Bill Hines and uh, sat right next to that young man. He's a lot of fun. Of course, if you take him along, that does limit some of the restaurants you could go to. Can't take him <laughs> to the bars. He's not old enough. Side by side now as they're coming up to turn 11 back into our view live here as they come through turn 11. Two rows side by side. Well, Stout will get around Ben, and Ben will tuck in behind him here in the carousel. Gavin yet to pick up a spot. Corey Winter just ahead of him. Bill Hines still leading Zoe in the second spot. In yeah. the 77 of Max Gordon. We wow. talked about Bill Hines during his qualifying efforts there with a plan to get out front. That's exactly what he did, knowing that they do a complete field inversion. Zoe coming under some pressure as Max Gordon beginning to close the gap, but right behind them, Robert Stout and Ben Mayer. Mayer's going to try to do it again. Dives to the inside in front of the keel. Yeah, down to the inside is exactly right, and does a nice job of keeping control of that truck. Doesn't get into the side of Stout. Nothing wrong with trying to make the move, that's for sure. That's what it's all about. You want to keep it under control. He did a great job of it. Hitting that jump there on the back straightaway as they air these things out. Here comes Gavin Harline as he's getting uh, up on the cam and uh, side by side with Corey Winter. There goes the youngster diving down to the inside of Stout one more time. Stout getting a little squirrely. Yeah, Stout struck really darting around there. A couple of pretty big moves. Goes outside in, tries to get on the outside of Max there, the number 77 Baja Jerky Continental Tire Truck. Those two had, uh, had some fun out there at Long Beach. It was Stout that got moved out of the way by young Max Gordon for the win. Kevin Harline picks up two spots as he moves up. Now up into the fourth spot as Zoe Edenholm really coming under some pressure from the 77 of Max Gordon, and that has allowed Bill Hines to get away at the front. Yeah, Bill can get out there, just set a pace, take it easy on the brakes. Stout down to the bottom on the inside of that fast left-hander as once again, he and Max go side by side. Max hangs on to the position. Stout's truck real twitching. Kevin Harline trying to get it, make it three wide among that group, sticking his nose in there. Meanwhile, Bill Hines comes across a little contact between Mad Max and Stout. Kevin Harlan down to the inside of Stout, turn number one, the three of them all together there. Stout picks the throttle back up as they go side by side through turn one. And uh, just for those of you who are curious, they are allowed to use the pit exit lane uh, at turn one. They're the only class here this weekend that are permitted to use that pit exit lane as uh, sort of a, an inside apex. Still side by side after all that action through one. It looks like Stout's going to get the position here 
through the keyhole. And Ben hanging right on the back bumper yet. Young man is going to school, learning quickly. Bill Hines two wheels off on the grass as he is going side by side with the youngster Ben Mayer as they come down into turn four. So and Max Holmes still lead, leading this group of cars. Yeah, Trump. absolutely right. Uh, they're in second place. Bill's checked out there, as you can see. Then it's Zoe doing a nice job, followed up by Stout, and then Ben. Ben Mayer doing an awesome job here. We knew he'd pick it up quickly. Had a lot of seats on there in North Carolina, testing these things. Of course, getting out here on the tracks is a little different story, but he's putting it together pretty quickly. Stout looking strong. He's closed up on Zoe. And now he's going to dive to the inside at turn eight. Try to complete the deal there at turn nine. I think Zoe got caught unawares there. She's got to be careful because the Nino is going to try to do the same thing. Yeah, we'll see if Stout can settle in and run a pace here. Gavin Harlan uh, will pick his way forward as well. Stout can settle in and run a pace. He knows that yellow flag. Oh, and Ben walks his way to the outside there. Small mistake there for the young man, but plenty of time to gather it back up. And those yellow flags will allow everybody to get back into the hunt. Here they come across the line to complete lap number three. We'll see that uh, competition yellow or fun laps will begin here when they get up to turn five. Bill Hines continues to work his, uh, excuse me, Gavin Harlan continues to work his way forward. He's now up to third now. Yeah, and it'll be fun to watch Stout and Harlan race each other. They really weren't around each other too much at Long Beach. Uh, both of them extremely fast, both very talented, and they will, uh, they'll need to learn how each other race to figure out their strengths and weaknesses, see what they can do in the last three laps. Oh, big move right there for Ben, had to hang on to it. That's what this series will do to you. If you hit that jump unloaded, and he was, he was just a little bit sideways when he hit that jump. It loaded one side, then it unloads when it springs off the jump, and it will launch you. His hands were quick. He nearly saved it. But unfortunately, went around. Good news is Corey Winter with quick hands of his own there, the number 61 Continental back machine, able to miss him. And they'll come back around here to pick up the yellow flag, so no harm, no foul here. Ben will be able to gather it back up and tag the back of the field. So the first competition caution in the air. There it is, uh, just past that jump. As the trucks will slow down, they will pack up, right, before the restart. So yes. any ground lost in that first uh, sequence. And that is, uh, yeah, good look at Bill Hines. They'll pack up behind Bill Hines. Bill Hines, a super individual, great ambassador for this series. Uh, instrumental in uh, Matty Brabham being inside of the, uh, the Andretti Auto Sports Indy Lights car. And, uh, I think Matty, if I'm not mistaken, qualified P4, I want to say, something like that a little bit earlier today. So we wish Matty the best of luck graduating out of this series. Matty, the third winningest driver in the history of Stadium Super Trucks. So uh, he has a lot of success, including wins out here at Mid Ohio. So we wish him the best. Nice slow pace, getting plenty of time for these trucks to. Uh, cool down just a little bit as we get a replay of that last series of jumps. Yeah, and there are no spotters for these trucks. However, they do have race control in their ear. So my guess is race control is telling Bill to uh, to slow down a little bit. As you look at the big screen there, and you can see Bill Hines carrying that left front tire in a big way, giving you some nice replay action here. Hines all four wheels off in the grass after that jump. And I think this is where Ben got it all wrong as that truck was about a 45 degree angle when it hit the ground. He's lucky he didn't roll it. Super impressed with how he saved it though. He definitely did not overreact, kept good control. And here comes Bill bringing the field back around to pick up the throttle on the gas. Here we go for the second stint. This time he's got Robert Stout right behind him as they come into turn number one. And right behind them is the man who's turned the fastest time, Gavin Harline. Yeah, I just watched Stout going to turn number one and locked up the rear tires, and that's what's making this truck so twitchy. He obviously has to catch it when it starts to uh, to lock up those rear tires and, and rotate the back of the truck as Gavin goes down to the inside of Bill Hines. Stout opens up the keyhole, turn two, if you will. Zoe hanging on to third place. Nice job. Corey Winter trying to make a move now. Corey and Ben side by side. Oh, boy, two rookies here going off the jump side by side. Nice job for both of them. Zoe holding them both off as Ben just behind her, but the top three beginning to put a little distance on him. And it looks like 
Stout look at Stout is looking stout at the moment. Well, the one I don't see in here is uh, is Max Gordon. Max is down here at the end of pit road has had some sort of mechanical so a tough break there for the 77 truck. Yeah for the second day in a row he had a problem yesterday as well in qualifying. As over the jump they come they're down in turn number six. Robert Stout holding off Gavin Harlan. Yeah, Harline, a nine time winner in the series. Yeah, that's exactly right. A lot of success. 2018 finished second in the points. 2019 third in the points. I mean, he's a solid, solid player. Uh, no doubt a threat anytime he shows up to win. We talked about him having a win right here at Mid Ohio going back to 2019. But talk about an up and down weekend. Finishes dead last in one race, comes back, wins the next race, and qualified on the pole the same weekend. So, I mean, it, it was a roller coaster ride for sure, but he's got a ton of talent. A lot of short course off road experience before he got in these trucks. Oh, Zoe goes and around. Ben does a nice job of uh, redirecting to Miss Zoe there in the carousel. And she wastes no time getting on the throttle, kicking up a little cloud of dust, and she is back underway. And we'll see. It looks like uh, Stout and Harlan are going to play nice here this uh, this group of three laps and probably take the gloves off next time around. Save the truck. Bill way off the track. Ben even further off the track. Speaking of short course off-road racing, getting his uh, taste of that. These are the only cars that could go into the gravel trap and come out unscathed. Yeah, never left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe pick up speed. Yeah, no kidding, no question. These big Continental tires are uh, doing a great job giving them traction on the on the pavement and off. But Robert Stout doing a great job keeping the nine-time champion in front of him, or nine-time winner, I should say, in front of him. So good-looking stuff here. Here comes. Gavin, Gavin taking a quick look here. And of course, as you might imagine, drafting plays a huge role in this uh, in this particular class. These trucks punch a big hole in the air. And actually, the way they're designed, they actually create lift. Instead of downforce, they create lift. So the nose of the truck comes up in the air, kind of acts like a, a parachute, if you will. So the front guys definitely have a disadvantage. So you want to be smart. You've got to position yourself right to try and win one of these races. Stout doing a great job keeping the nine-time winner behind him as they come through turn nine. Looking race lap number seven here. As they accelerate down through Thunder Valley and up, climb the hill up into turn 11. This is where they really get those front wheels off the ground. And high speed turn 11. Almost lifts that inside rear wheel off the ground. Right, I mean, they really arch those chassis. There's no question about it. See when that when that uh, unloaded wheel up off the ground comes back down, a little puff of smoke. It's like an airplane landing because it's got to get that uh, wheel back up to speed as they are nose to tail heading into turn one, hitting the brakes almost simultaneously. And Gavin staying right on the bumper, watching everything that Stout does, taking notes. He'll be ready for those final three laps. Yeah, he's looking where he's a little stronger, and where he can make the move in the most unexpected place catching Robert Stout by surprise. And Bill Hines not far off the pace here. These guys make any sort of mistake at all. Bill's going to be right in the middle of it. You betcha. He's three out in front of Corey Winter. He's kind of been a lonely force spot. Mayor and Zoe. Sadly, Max Gordon off with a mechanical. Here he comes. Gavin's going to go for it here around the outside. A little earlier on the brakes, Robert Stout, that truck is twitchy. Able to make the pass there around the outside. For the first time, Gavin Harline at the point. Remember, he started at the back on the inverted field. Now, with five laps to go, he has taken over the point. Yeah, both these guys, right, starting second to last and last. And now uh, the notebook is starting to fill up here. Gavin figured out a place where he could get around him. Stout saw what the move was. We'll see if Stout's got enough, enough truck to keep up with him. I really wonder, Gavin, uh, it looked like Gavin had the best truck yesterday in qualifying. It flew perfectly. And he's been able to keep up with Stout. It seems, uh, seems like without any issues at all there for those couple of laps. And then when he decided to make the pass, made it look pretty easy. So Gavin might be a handful to take care of here today. Carrying a lot more speed through the final turn onto the front straightaway because they don't have to get lined up for that jump that we had there. As we got a good battle between Ben Mayer and Corey Winter, the two debutantes here in their first start in the Speed Energy Stadium, Stadium Super Trucks. 
they're having a great battle of their own. And that's great. You know, that's what you want to do. You want to get this first one under your belt, learn what you can. Keep, keep good control of the truck. Stout, right whenever I say, uh, I don't know if he'll be able to keep up with the 55 truck, has shown him a nose and able to make the move down there in the keyhole and takes over the lead. Not sure if that's where you want to take over the lead, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. So now uh, clearly the 55 truck's going to have a run all the way down this straightaway. Looks like he'll try the same exact move again as Gavin Harlan. Now right up beside Stout as they go side by side. The fans being treated to a great race here. Stout. A little bit later on the brakes, but uh, Harline able to carry a little more speed. But they're still in it. They're still side by side at the top of the hill, turn five. A little over under action here, maybe, as they come across the jump. And I believe should pick up that mandate, that second final mandatory caution here. And there it is. There it is. So both guys doing a great job here. Gavin will lead them back to the stripe, get them all going. He'll go slow here and let the field bunch back up. Hats off to Corey Winter and to uh, to Ben Mayer. Ben Mayer doing an awesome job. The 13-year-old headed into eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even have his driver's license yet. And he's out here getting it done. Of course, Max, the same scenario. Max just turning 14 a couple of weeks ago. And we talked about him getting a win at Long Beach. There's a look at what happened to Zoe, unfortunately. Just a a little out of sorts there off of that jump. Yeah, just a little too much speed through that turn, and it went around on her own. I mean, she didn't get a, get any help from anybody, but uh, she'll have a chance to pack up at the back of the pack. Stout on the back bumper of Gavin right there as those two guys uh, start to spar a little bit. And, of course, these final three laps will decide who's going to stand on top of the box. Will it be these two guys? Or will these two guys take themselves out and not be on the box at all? Nothing is a given out here. Boy, these super slow-mo replays are so great. You can really see the sidewall of the tire collapsing as it absorbs a lot of that energy and the, the 20 inches of travel in the front of these trucks. BP Race Fuels, Gavin Harlan truck. Out of the final turn, picks up the throttle at start finish. Here we go, three laps, ladies and gentlemen. The shootout is on. And to turn one, they go. Bill Hines right there with him, man, up and down a little bit there, on and off the throttle, but hanging right with these guys. Bill Hines with a win, 2018. Stout pulls along the outside. He's going to try to feed Gavin Harline maybe a little bit of his own medicine to see if he can go around the outside at the keyhole. He's still there. He got the jump right after this turn, remember? Well, he rotates nicely around the keyhole, and Stout will pick up the spot here. But again, I just don't know that this is where you want to lead down the back straightaway. Gavin's going to have this huge draft. Stout going to punch a huge hole in the air here. So, But he's seen the move twice now, and we'll find out what he does. Here comes Gavin one more time. Back to the outside. Stout will push him all the way out to the white line. You can see that. Make him go the long way around so he can carry a little more speed on the inside. But Gavin gets it done again. Never flinches. Bills. Bill Hines still right there. Yeah, right there to pounce if these two come to tears at all. They go over the jump there coming out of turn five. Down into turn number six. Nose to tail. Corey Winter suddenly showing up as well. Look at Corey Winter back there in fourth place. Now keeping pace with Bill Hines. Absolutely. It's a four-way battle at the front. With three to go. It'll be two to go when they come across the straight next time. As they drop the wheels off to the outside of that very tricky turn nine. Down in Thunder Valley now climbing back up out. This is where you see the wheels way off the ground. We'll turn 11. Gavin Harlan down there in the carousel. Opens up the entry, late apex to try to straighten that out between turns 12 and 13. Two laps to go as they hit the brakes for turn number one. Gavin carrying good speed through turn number one. Talented young man, put his racing career aside, went to school for engineering, graduated, now doing a great job getting his life started. I'll tell you what, Robert Stout, though, gets a fantastic run off of turn one. He's able to get alongside Gavin every time coming through that turn. 
Yeah, and Stout no fool either. Stout, a three-time national champion in different disciplines, short course off-road, sports cars, won a world challenge, a Pirelli World Challenge Championship in sports cars, has been in just about everything, including wing sprint cars. He's going to take a look at him now on the inside, down the back straightaway. Does he have enough to make it happen? He's going to be on the outside of turn number five yet again, not necessarily where you want to be. Was not able to make it happen on the inside. Gavin able to carry a lot of speed, really over-rotates the truck right there, but he's in a good position to hang on to it. On into turn six they come, and diving down to the inside is Bill Hines. As he's thinking about uh, that second spot. As they drop a wheel off and come over the final jump. Before they make the plunge down turn nine. And head toward the end of the lap. Maybe white flag out, one lap to go. As they come across the line this time. Yeah, really impressed with Bill Hines hanging here with these two guys at the end of this race. Look, Corey Winter off the track just a little bit. Ben trying to make him pay. He does. Ben slots into that fourth spot. With Corey Winter right behind him. And Zoe there to pick up the pieces if these two come together. Yeah, Zoe hanging right there with those two guys. You're absolutely right. As they come back out of the last turn, look for the white flag here. One lap to go. And the first moto here this weekend, round number three of the 2022 Stadium Super Truck Series. Stout keeping pace right there through turn one that time. Watch him get this run coming out of turn one. He's, he gets that truck down on all four wheels, and it really accelerates hard. But this time, Gavin Harlan, I think, ready for it. Stout not quite as close as he was a lap ago. We'll see if he's got a trick up his sleeve for this run down toward turn four on the final lap. Got to save it here. Rotated nice through the keyhole. Stout with a good run already. Be able to get there. He's going to tuck in behind him, get that draft. Harlan knows exactly what the game is. Out through turn number three. Stout trying to get a little bit of draft. Here he comes. He's going to pop down to the inside on the brakes a little bit earlier. Gavin does a great job. It's going to be hard for Stout to find another spot to pass here. He's right on the bumper, literally. Yeah, that 8-9 complex sometimes opens up the bottom. We'll see if, uh, if he can possibly take advantage of that. He is certainly very close there. That might be exactly what he's thinking here. Over the final jump, thinking about going down to the inside at turn nine. He's not quite close enough to pull the trigger. And now the final run to the flag. He'll carry a ton of speed here through this left-hander, pick up that left front tire. And if Gavin doesn't bobble there, and he does not, he should seal the deal right here. Stout closes it back up on the back bumper, rotates nicely through the carousel, but he's not going to have enough for the 55 truck. The 55 truck, and Gavin Harlan is going to put together his 10th career stadium super truck win. Stout pulls up beside him right there on the back bumper, but couldn't get it done. Made a run at it right at the very end. Exciting battle between these two. Although the uh, screen is showing a checkered flag, these guys think there's another lap, and they're still hard on it. Well, let's announce it, right? I mean, we really, if we we're right in front of the flag stand, we can't see the other side to see if they've thrown the flag. Yeah, we haven't seen a, we haven't seen a white or a checker yet. So we, they're just going to let them keep racing. Yeah, we'll here. see how much fuel they have in these things. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's not done yet. So if these guys were looking for a white flag, as you said, and they didn't throw it, or we have not, we couldn't see it from our vantage point. They for sure are still on the gas. You're absolutely right, John. Here comes Stout one more time. Down to the inside. He's got a nose ahead this time. Is he going to be able to clear him on and off the brake one more time to try and carry enough speed? Harlan's going to try to go outside in on him, and he does. Stout has that inside line at the top of the hill coming to the jump. Stout's out in front. Stout able to hang on here so far. Great battle between these two, as tough as it gets. We're hearing from race control, they're going to see the white flag this time. Wow. It's going to be a 13-lap race. You're right. I hope they've got enough VP fuel in these cars. Bill Hines still not far off the pace with these guys. Oh, and Gavin looks like he has some sort of a mechanical. I wonder if he did just have a fuel pickup issue. These things really won't go much more than the designated laps. That's what they fuel them up for. The starter has the white flag in his hand. Can these guys get around this 2.25 mile circuit one more time? 
Might play right into the hands of some of the drivers in the back like they were able to save some fuel. <laughs> Robert Stout with about a three, four truck length lead. This is the biggest lead anybody's had for a while now. As it obviously when they came down out of Thunder Valley, it sure looked like Gavin Harline's truck was stumbling a little bit, whether he just had a momentary issue or maybe, like you said, a fuel pickup problem. Well, he's right back on him now. I think he's, he's still in the draft. I think he's got enough here. Yeah, that's close right there. Yeah, maybe he's still struggling. Maybe it is uh, some sort of fuel pickup issue. I don't know if he's close enough to take advantage of the draft here down the back straightaway this time. Yeah. Robert Stout well out in front now. Gavin Harline, the nine-time winner, giving his best shot. He's still hard on it, there's no question. As they come through turn four for the final time. This time coming to what we believe will be the checkered flag. And yeah. over they go. We clearly were way off here watching the screen and doing our countdown, and we had our fingers going and everything. <laughs> Well, you know, if it's more than 10 laps, you got to take your shoes. Your shoes <laughs> That's off. exactly right. Exactly right. Robert Stout doing a great job here, keeping the veteran behind him. Look at the final run to the checkers. Yeah, it's good to see these two guys put on a good show there. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to Garvin Gar uh, with, with Gavin last time through here, but clearly the truck had some sort of issue and he lost a lot of ground and he's picked up pace ever since then, but whatever it was, allowed Stout to get away, put about four or five car lengths on him, and Stout's going to take full advantage of that. And Stout will pick up a full 12 points to pad to the two points. Fist pump outside of the window. Gavin probably frustrated in there. Hats off to Bill Hines. Solid, solid race here today for the 57 truck. Then Ben and Corey both doing an incredibly good job making their debut here in the Stadium Super Truck Series. Nice, nice job. And Zoe's going to round out the field. Tough break for the 77 truck of Max Gordon out of this one early on. Came in here second in the points. Really uh, a solid shot at this championship. And it's not over. There's still a lot of racing yet to do. But Zoe will cross the stripe here. Congratulations to her. But great show there at the front there with a couple of laps yet to go. Ken, it's always fun to have the uh, Speed Energy uh, Stadium Super Trucks here as you're going to head down to the podium to celebrate the winners with this one. But we've still got two more races to go, kids. Don't go anywhere as the finale for the Road to Indy coming up next. You betcha. Robert Stout taking the win. His, his uh, second career win and his first of this season. So he joins the multiple winners club. Gavin Harline of the drivers here, the only one with uh, more than a single win, and he's had nine of them. Robert Stout with two wins to his name. Gavin Harline in the second spot. Bill Hines started at the front. So a little celebratory donuts in front of the crowd there at the Essence. For the 28 of Robert Stout. wave from the crowd as they appreciate the show these guys put on, guys and gals put on. But ben Mayer, the 13-year-old in the 67 truck, coming home in four spot just off the podium. Corey Winter also on his first start in the 61, coming home in fifth. And Zoe Edenholm had a problem on the final lap as she got off course, but still made it around to take the finish in sixth spot. Max Gordon again with a technical issue with that truck for the second day in a row. Hopefully they can get that sorted and Max will be in the show tomorrow. So the truck's coming by side by side to salute the remaining crowd as they'll work their way through the final complex of turns here through the carousel and head down the pit lane and Ken Stout will be down there on the podium to celebrate with our top three finishers. Indy Pro 2000, race number two. The finale will be our last race of the day. It will start late in the day at 5.55 for the green flag. But before that, at 5 o'clock, will be the USF 2000 finale, their third of three races, as we're getting a great replay of the side-by-side -side battle between Robert Stout and Gavin Harline. Stout. Brings it home. 
in the front. Fist shake out the window, saluting the starter. As Robert Stout makes the win. And a couple donuts for good measure. <laughs> Gavin Harline had to dodge the winner after he turned his celebratory donuts. So there's your order. Robert Stout, your winner in the 28 truck. Gavin Harline, after starting at the back, comes home in second, led and looked like he had an insurmountable lead, but Robert Stout able to find a way around him at the end. Bill Hines, who started at the front, saved being uh, swamped by the, the all the trucks that qualified faster than him, comes home in a well-deserved third spot. Ben Mayer and Corey Winter had a great battle all race long for fourth and fifth. Zoe Edenholm. Comes home in sixth, and Max Gordon with that problem dropped out after just four laps. Top three chucks pulling it into Dixon Road, the <laughs> the uh, winner, the road down to the winner circle. Robert Stout climbing out of his truck as he'll give a good number one to the camera, and he'll congratulate Gavin Harline, who finished in second spot. Those two had a good race. Big smiles on both their faces. As Bill Hines climbs out of his truck. Clearly, these drivers all like one another. Big congratulations for the uh, the three of them. And uh, sounds like Ken Stout is down there on the podium yeah, ready to that, get things brother. started. Great Go run, ahead. man. Come here. Awesome. Yeah. The plan, did it work out the way you wanted? I mean, I would have won if it worked out the way I wanted to. But, man, it, uh, thanks for all the fans that come out here. And that fan I saw earlier today, this is not staged. So there you go. We put on a show. We got equally prepared cars by Robbie Gordon. We're missing Robbie Gordon. He's out in uh, China building some some of the most phenomenal UTVs. So all his competitors, you better watch out. Anyway, I'd like to thank the Thrillcast, all my supporters, and uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just come on, let's get you guys up here on the podium. That third place in qualifying had a point yesterday. You know that. <laughs> Finishing off in third place, he's a season series veteran. His ninth year with the Stadium Super Trucks, grabbed a win in 2018. Been doing it over 120 starts. Bill Hines, congratulations. Third place, brother. Thank you. Again, like I said, thanks, everyone, for coming out. And uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, I don't get on this enough, but so I always cherish these moments. And uh, thanks for all the people that showed up today. Uh, the Ohio, mid-Ohio fans are always the best, the promoters. Kevin Savory, Kim Green, they put on one hell of a show. And I didn't spike anyone's helmet this year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Our next competitor took a couple of years off, earned a great education, decided to get back inside of the race truck. He has nine wins. Thought he was going to steal a tenth one here. Not sure what happened there with a the lap count, but nonetheless, you guys raced to the very end. It'll be 31 career podiums. Solid effort, man. How'd it feel? Yeah, no, that was a great race. Me and Stout definitely had an amazing battle. Uh, we were just out there not even worrying about saving our trucks halfway through. We just wanted to battle the whole time. Switched the lead a couple times. Uh, let them by in the last couple laps, which is unfortunate, but definitely still an awesome race and be back out there tomorrow for the win. Quick question there. I think it was about two, two laps to go. It looked like you had a mechanical with the truck going through uh, the left-hander. Yeah, the last couple laps it started sputtering a little bit. I don't know if it's fuel pressure. I've had some problems with that in the past. Oil pressure, whatever the case may be. I still got it across the finish line, but yeah, I was kind of limping it. Whenever I was rolling over really hard, it was losing a little power, but all the way up until that, it was running awesome, and we, we had an amazing battle, so it was cool. Finishing up in second place here today, put your hands together for Gavin Harlan. Nice run.
and picking up his second career stadium super truck win after his win in Nashville a year ago. Looking for another overall, but that one is far from decided yet. They'll have another motor to go through, but a great battle between you two. He mentioned that you guys were, uh, were swapping the lead back and forth. Also, a very clean battle between the two of you, and you really don't have much experience racing each other. Uh, yeah, no, we were, obviously we ran Long Beach against each other, but we didn't spend much time on track necessarily against each other. But uh, just super pumped for how this weekend's gone so far. I really wanted to, to get the pole yesterday, and he beat me by less than a tenth, so we knew it was going to be a good battle. But Continental Tire and Lucas Oil being on board is, is really cool to be able to go hang around the front. No, I've got a legitimate shot at the win every time I show up with these guys in this truck. So really excited about that. He did get by with a few laps to go, and I was a little concerned because he was beating me in a couple areas. I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get this done. But uh, like he said, his truck was rolling over. He started driving really aggressive, and I was able to, uh, to take advantage of that a little bit. So last lap, whenever I saw there was a little bit of a breathing room, I was pretty excited and pumped to see that Bill Hines was, uh, was hanging the whole time. I was waiting for him to shove his nose in and, and play in the mix. So uh, just a really fun day here at Mid-Ohio. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner here, Moto One, Robert Stout, driver of the number 28, Lucas Oil, Continental Tire, Fathead's Eyewear Back Machine. Your top three, Bill Hines, Gavin Harlan, Robert Stout.